for part A. The electron is being pulled this way by this force F, and F is equal to um, 8.988 times 10 to the ninth times the charge of the fixed charge is 1. The test charge is, in absolute value, is 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19. That's the charge of a coulomb. And then the distance is 1. Square that, and you get 1.43 times 10 to the minus 9. OK, so that's tiny, uh, not, not noticeable. Um, Then, in the other case, the force is going this. Oh, and to put that into a vector, uh, this is in the negative x direction. So we have a vector of negative 1.43 times 10 to the minus 9, 0. Uh, in the other case, the force is going this way because it's always you know, the test charge is going towards the fixed charge because of the opposite signs. Uh, and F is equal to 8.988 times 10 to the ninth times 1 times 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19. The distance is 1 times 10 to the minus 8. Square that and you get a value of uh, 1.43 times 10 to the 7 newtons. And so since now it's going in the positive x direction, this is 1.43 times 10 to the 7, 0. Uh, so now it's 14 million newtons. Uh, it's the same two charges. But that's because of the strong effect uh, having to do with the, with the distance apart that they are. Is that, so that's pretty close. Like, what if we, is it reasonable to use that, you think, as like a sort of an upper limit to how strong it can be? Like, it can't get too much bigger than that, right? Well, it can't. <laughs> I was using my trick question voice. Um, yeah, it can get way, like, imagine if you put zero in the denominator, this blows up to infinity. So um, the closer you get, it just keeps getting bigger and bigger. There's no kind of cutoff. Um, and eventually it says, like, if you actually put these two particles in the same location, which can't happen, uh, you'd get an infinite force. Um, So I'm not going to do this calculation because it just starts to take a long time. But um, say that you had all these fixed charges. Say this is plus 2 coulombs, um, plus 1 coulomb. Uh, minus 5 coulombs, minus 1 times 10 to the minus 3rd coulombs. And then say you had a test charge here. Um, say this is minus 1 coulomb. OK, that's your test charge. Um, what's the total force on the test charge? Well, that's got to be impossible, right? <laughs> right. It's not impossible. Um, so the way you would do that is you would calculate the force on the test by the 1 as a vector 
physics. Yeah, calculate the force on the test by the two. And each one of these individually is just doing what we just did in the example. <laughs> uh, the force on the, on the test by the minus 5. And the force on the test by the minus 1 times 10 to the minus 3rd. We know how to do each one of those individually. But I'm not, I'm not going through the calculation, but you can see how. And then the total force on the test charge is equal to F T1, that vector, plus the force on the test by the 2, plus the force on the test by the minus 5, plus the force on the test by the minus 1 to the minus 10 to the minus 3rd. Okay, so that's how you do it conceptually. You, you should sort of understand how that works, but um, we're not going to do. I mean, so in theory, like, you could have a million charges, which is kind of what you have in the real world, right? I mean, like, uh, a real object has all these charges. Um, Uh, and um, so in order to figure out what the, um, what the electric attraction or repulsion on some test charge is, like by this pen, you would figure out where all the protons and electrons are in the pen. It's not really a pen. It's a computer stylus. But, um, and you'd have your test charge here of, one electron or whatever, you'd calculate the force vector applied to the electron by every single particle in this pen. That would take a while. And then add them all up and you'd get the fact like, oh, there's no electric repulsion because essentially because all the electrons and all the protons cancel out. And you'd be like, I shouldn't have, yeah, I shouldn't have taken all that time doing that. Exactly. How long did you say? Probably a few hours. Yeah, I'd have to say, yeah. Probably. I mean, how many protons are there in this? I, I mean, yeah. I don't think you could do it in your own lifetime, probably. That's a little bit longer than a couple Yeah. Um, okay, so um, a group of fixed charges together, um, like the ones that I just talked about that we didn't do this calculation for, but this is a group of four fixed charges. Okay, you could have a group of four fixed charges or a group of you know millions of fixed charges, billions of fixed charges, um, produces what's ca called a force field um, for a given test charge. Um, so what's the meaning of a force field? <laughs> yeah, good. I'm glad you remember that. So. So a force, so what's a poppy field? Yeah, so the key thing for a poppy field is um, no matter where you go in this field, there's a poppy, right? And um, so a poppy field, uh, wherever you go, there's a poppy. Um, a force field uh, 
uh, the meaning of that is wherever you go, there's a force vector. It's probably not as pretty. Could be. I mean, really, poppies probably <laughs> could be. It depends what you like. I mean, um, so Um, so if the test charge is at, say, this location, it feels this force vector. Um, if the test charge is at this location, it feels this force vector. So just like, um, You can sort of, uh, like, so in a poppy field, the, those fields, you can think of those poppies are all out there, you know? And which poppy you make your drugs out of depends on where in the field you are, you know? Um, the, uh, the force field, you can think of those vectors as all being out there waiting for the test charge to come to that location. And when the test charge gets to that location, this is the force field. Um, so. Force fields are not uh, well described in superhero shows um, where they're like impenetrable barriers or whatever. Like, look, I'm producing a force field, a gravitational force field. Like, that doesn't, okay, okay yeah, right. Like, you don't really notice it or anything, but. Um... <laughs> Good ones, but they don't say that. That's what they should say, like, my seat, my, Superpower is producing good, really strong force fields. No, I don't think so. I don't know. Maybe I never, I never took it that way. I never took it that way, because like in the Incredibles, they say no force fields. Well, everybody produces a force field. Everyone produces electrical force fields, magnetic force fields, gravitational force fields. <laughs> yeah. Um, and um, we're going to talk about force fields for a few common uh, patterns of fixed charges. Um, Let's do that next time. Let's take 20 minutes off. Just personal time for ourselves, you know? Go get ice cream at the Overlook or something. That, uh, that doesn't really, that's not the way I was picturing that time being used. But no, 